Hi there, this is Chris Klein, Ecosystem Program Manager, back to talk to you about the Smart Gallery Publisher. This is a new beta tool that Smart has created to allow third-party content providers and publishers to take their digital resources and distribute them in an easy-to-use file format with Smart Notebook software. So our shared customer user base has simple double-click functionality to move large amounts of coded resources into notebook software for use with their lessons. So what I'd like to do today is I'd like to go ahead and talk to you over the next 15 minutes about what the gallery is, what the difference between the normal gallery and the gallery publisher tool is, and then finally how to actually use the gallery publisher. And I will launch it and I will show you how to quickly build a simple gallery interface. So to begin with, what is the gallery? The gallery is a collection of over 6,700 items provided free of charge by SMART to all notebook software users. It comes as part of the download and it provides images, flash files, audio files, flash video files, interactive content, documents, etc. Some of this has been created by SMART and some of it is also partner content by existing publishers that are utilizing a teaser format by providing 10, 15, 20, 25 pieces of content for free in the hopes of driving customers to their website. So the customers say, wow, I really like the quality of the image and I'd like to get more images by this publisher. So that is absolutely something that the ecosystem can work with you on if you are interested in doing so. The interesting thing is that everything within the gallery, with over 6,700 items, it can get very cumbersome for the teachers to be able to quickly find the resources that they need. So everything that's in the gallery follows the SCORM standards. The SCORM standards are an easy way to be able to put in keywords and search terms so that when I go into my gallery, as I'm going to do, I'm going to click on my gallery icon tab. I'm then going to click in my search window and I'm going to say, let's say I want to find a picture of a protractor. So I type in the word protractor and search, and I see that I have one picture, but I also have two interactive flash files. These are all just designated with the term protractor, so that's what pulls up when I type in the word protractor. If I come down to properties, you'll see that this particular image has the word angle, degree, geometry, inclination, mathematics, protractor, radian, and trigonometry. So if I were to search for radian, I will also pull up in the list of possible results, I will find that my protractor shows up in that result as well. That's because of the SCORM standards, and this is something that the publisher can actually set to get greater visibility of their resources and therefore drive the customers to utilizing more of their original digital content. Finally, what I would like to say about the gallery is that even though we provide our gallery essentials, our lesson activity toolkit, our gallery sampler, there's also the My Content folder, which teachers love. This is what allows a teacher to take any image, any object whatsoever, and they're able to take and add it into my content for later use. So something as simple as me taking the smiley face line, I can then go ahead and click on this smiley face line and drag and drop it into my content. And then when I come in and take a look through my pictures, here is that smiley face line that at a later time I can click and drag right back out onto my workspace. So teachers have been utilizing this for quite some time and what they've been doing is they've actually been using the digital resource CDs that come from the publisher, dropping the images onto notebook which translates them into a gallery object file and then dropping them into the my content section. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you about how removing that barrier to entry can make it even more plausible for the end users to look at your content and really try to get the most out of it. So the gallery versus a publisher. Instead of this teacher is getting this digital resource CD, as I said, and let's say it comes with 300 separate images on it that go along with the textbook or with the print material that you're already providing to them. Well, instead of the teacher having to take 300 images and one by one drag and drop them onto notebook by utilizing the insert picture file, 
and then taking it from Notebook where now it's been converted into a gallery object file and dropping it into my content and typing in what the title of it should be, and etc. The publisher allows single icon packaging of digital resources. Where I'm not saying to get rid of the 300 still pictures that may already come out on that CD, what I'm saying is also at the end of that CD, make sure to include a gallery file that you created with Publisher. So if I'm a Smartboard user and a Smart Notebook user, all I have to do is double click on that file and all 300 images will be simultaneously put into my gallery with the search terms that you have set up for it. Another interesting thing about using the Gallery Publisher is it allows for packaged flash content. Again, by using my insert menu, if I find any SWF flash files, standalone flash files, I can just go ahead and insert flash file onto any page with a notebook. I can then click and drag and drop that into my content. But a lot of publishers have figured out that you can actually build more robust flash activities by utilizing a reference or a resource folder. So the flash file will have will actually have to resource a subfolder to find the correct images, graphics, questions, sound files and whatnot. It's very difficult, almost impossible to do that by the simple gallery interface by dragging and dropping into notebook and putting it into the gallery. But with the gallery publisher it allows you to actually package all of that up so the correct reference folder is coming along with it so it, it can be placed into the gallery very easily. You're able to predefine your SCORM search terms. So just as I showed you with the Protractor, there were nine terms. The teachers generally will not go in and will not put in a lot of those search terms themselves, even though they have the capability of doing so. So if you would like to increase the visibility of your resources, you can actually build in those SCORM search terms in the Gallery Publisher tool for delivery to the teachers. And finally, as you update your digital content, the Gallery Publisher allows you to set a URL, an update server location. So just like what Smart does, if I click in my gallery and click on my wrench for my actions, I can check for updates and actually find any of the any updates to any of these galleries that I currently have installed. And one of these could be your gallery. So now you don't have to worry about the fiscal responsibility of sending out additional content CDs, additional, additional digital resources CDs, because you can actually just route them directly to the server and they can download it at their own pace when they see fit. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the Gallery Publisher looks like. I'm going to go ahead and launch the Gallery Publisher. As you can see, this is Gallery Publisher 1. This still is in beta. We are working on some modifications and improvements to it. And the interface is very straightforward. In the left hand side, this is where I'm browsing my computer. You see that currently I'm looking at my documents and I can change to look at my computer. I can change to look at um, things on my desktop, etc. And I can go ahead and I'm actually going to go ahead and leave it on desktop. In the upper right hand corner, what I have here, this is the name of the gallery that I would like to create. So currently I'm working on Gallery 1. If I wanted to, by double clicking, I can come in and say this is Publisher Webinar.